welcome to come home. It's so good to be able to be in our homes, in our kitchens. I don't know if you're watching from an iPhone, a smartphone, a laptop, whether you're watching in your car while you're driving, be careful, or you're watching from a hospital room or maybe with someone you love, but thank you for being part of this show. You know, the reason it's called Come Home is because over 30 years ago, when I was born again, massively touched by God and rededicated my life, it was through Christian television, right where you are right now, looking at a screen. And the host of the 700 Club, uh, Sheila Walsh, at that time was ministering and the Holy Spirit literally came through the camera, touched my broken heart, she prophetically spoke to me and it changed my life. Then after the commercial break, she comes back and picks up a microphone and sings a song called Jennifer Come Home. That is why this show is called Come Home. And I'm believing that God's gonna speak to you today, encourage you and minister to you today because that is the kind of God that we love and serve. My guest today is so special. You are gonna so enjoy hearing how her ministry unfolded through a dream, through obedience, and she's doing exactly what the book of Proverbs tells us to do. The virtuous woman says, it says of her that she is a voice to the voiceless, that she speaks up for those that are marginalized, minimized, abused, those who have injustice that has been committed against them. And Chris Zebuck is going to share with us how she started a ministry with no experience, but she had a passion and she had a call. And now there is a place in Alabama called Camille's Place. And it is a center for hope and for healing, all because she said yes to her calling. Today, God's calling you to do things too. And I pray after this show, you will be more inclined to say yes to your purpose, that passion and that calling that our great God has given you. Now, we like to go out, we like to showcase wonderful people, wonderful things and uh, special events happening all around. Today's no difference, let's go. Welcome back to Bath and Body Hacks. Everything for cleansing. You want to start first thing in the morning by flushing, flushing. Oh, spill a little tea, but that tea is going to flush, flush toxins out of your body. First thing in the morning, you want to also make sure you brush your hair and your skin because this skin is your largest organ of detoxification. So make sure you've got a good body brush. When you bathe, you want to make sure you're not bathing in chlorinated water. This is a $40 filter and you can get it to take the chlorine out of your water. So that's really important. What you put in that water in the bathtub, and this is my baby bathtub for today, you can put in things like DMSO, which is straight sulfur. It just helps pull toxins out of your body. All of these essential oils will actually be absorbed better if you have some DMSO and some minerals in your bathtub. So you've heard of using Epsom salt, which is magnesium and sulfur. Did you know you can also use just simple borax? This turns your water into a hydrogen bath. So just use a cup of it in your big bathtub um, and it will turn it into a hydrogen bath. Also, you can use, this is a concentrated hydrogen peroxide. Use about four or five tablespoons in a, a large bathtub and you've just hydrogenated your water. That's a very good way to detox your body. So inside, outside, what you're doing is pulling toxins and flushing your organs. We always recommend, you know, before you take a bath, take some vitamin C. That way, while you're bathing, that vitamin C is flushing and cleansing the inside. I use castor oil on my skin in the bathtub. I'll put some right here on my thyroid gland, right in there, and then put some of my topical iodine, and that's a great way to support your thyroid gland. Castor oil is a carrier. It's gonna help carry whatever you put on with it, like rosemary oil, or this is clary sage. 
great for the brain. This is cloves. It will help get rid of all those little extra critters in your tummy that you don't want. Um, so these oils, did you know you can even use salt? This Himalayan salt, put a cup of it in your bathtub and now you've turned your bath into a mineral bath. I use all of these things because your skin is a super important part of your brain health. Think about it, okay? God bless you. Want more Come Home? Keep the conversation going online by connecting with us on social media. Hear more from Jen, learn more about our guests, and connect with other viewers on Facebook and Instagram. Follow at Jen Mellon to find out more. That's one of my favorite things to do is bring you to great people, great advice, great happenings, and great things that you can apply in your life. Well, I'm very excited about my next guest. I love real girls that have a real God story and that take what Jesus says seriously and act on it, especially when everything seems impossible. And that is what Chris Zebuck did when she uh, got before the Lord and, and really started chewing on the things that he had shown her. Now it has been a week of dreams. And so it's kind of interesting that her, her this calling and passion was birthed through a dream. So welcome. Thank welcome you. to come home. What a treat to You're be adorable. here. Thank you are you. So, uh, you are adorable. <laughs> um, you are too. Oh, yeah. Okay, God's good, right? Okay, so let's talk about um, Camille Place and CamillePlace.com, you need to go there um, and help support the vision and pray. But how did, how was it birthed? Sh tell us the history, because that's really important to the miracle of where, where we are now. Right, so going back, um, just sort of my faith journey, I grew up in a great home. Um, and later in life had gone through a divorce and was uh, really in a bad place. You know, angry with God for not answering prayers to restore our marriage. And um, so we were divorced, uh, it was spring break, I was with my girls at the beach. And young girls, you know, they bounce from a hot tub to a pool, you know, back and forth. And um, so I was really minding my own business at this point in my life, but I was reading a book called Kisses from Katie. And she She's a missionary from Brentwood, Tennessee in Africa. And that's really spiritually all I was doing is reading her book. Okay. And all of a sudden the power of God just came over me. Mm. And I knew at that moment forward, my life was gonna look different and be different. And it was. And at that point, um, I really just wanted to marinate with Jesus day in and day out and pray and I got back and, and of course asked his forgiveness for being so angry at him. <laughs> and, but just got back just with, with being in his presence. And some days it would be until it was time to pick my kids up from school that I would change out of pajamas into regular clothes. Um, so he just gave you this sweet little bubble of, mm -hmm. of where you could just be with him yes. all day. All day. day. Oh. Um, I had a prayer partner, so I began to pray off past trauma, hurt, pain, rejection. Boy, was there rejection. Um, and un ungodly vows, soul ties, all of these things, I just began to, um, to pray with a prayer partner, and I began to feel different. Um, I remember, this is so bad to say, but I do remember there was one time that I, um, I hit my knee on the dishwasher and an ugly word just didn't come out anymore. <laughs> You know, not that, like, that bad. You, thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> so it just shifted, like the inside of me shifted, and um, where there had just been, um, where I felt like I was in a pit, yeah. I felt joy. Uh. Um, and so I, um, I began to worship and finding different songs, different artists um, that would just bring me to the throne room. And at that point, I started having very vivid dreams at night that were like going on vacation 
And I actually remember one night thinking, I can't wait to go to bed <laughs> tonight oh. because of the dreams that I would have. Yeah. And I knew um, that God was speaking and I wanted to honor that. So I began to journal and date and, um, and write them down and um, just ask the Lord, what does this mean? And, and some of them I would get um, an answer to, the, to a definition and some I would not. And fast forward two years later, on a Thursday night is when I had my first nightmare. Oh. And that dream, my daughter was kidnapped and trafficked. And in the dream, thank the good Lord that I didn't experience um, what she was, had, how she had been tormented. I just knew that she was being trafficked out of our country. Two nights later, I woke my husband up screaming. I was in the dream, but yet it was a vision, so I could see down below. Um, I was being drugged into the woods by a man and a woman. And I didn't tell anybody. Of course, I prayed into them, especially one with my child, and didn't hear anything from the Lord, but just continued to pray. Of course, that was the Thursday, then a Sunday. On the following Monday, I was in a gift shop, and a lady from Texas that I did not know um, came in. She's precious. We began to run our mouths, talking, <laughs> chit-chatting, and um, and she, and long story short, says, I hear the Lord saying, you're going to open a home for girls rescued from human trafficking. And I thought, lady, Jesus. you're precious, but this is not <laughs> my call. This is not for me. Like I, I, I'm not equipped or qualified. My degree is in early childhood. I could teach, but but this is is not in the scope of of how I'm equipped. And she left the store. And she came back 15 minutes later with a wall plaque, and she said, "The Lord highlighted this for one of your homes." And I looked at her and I said, "That's plural. What do you mean, <laughs> homes? Like that? You know, now we're really getting crazy here." And she said, "Yes. Here's a name and number of someone you're to call when it gets to that point." Oh. And so, I at this point dreamed night after night of me being a victim of human trafficking, where I was set on fire where I was drugged and knew that I just had seconds before I would be out of it and I needed to get help. I've counseled the perpetrator. I've thrown things out of a car window to try to signal for help. I've been shipped in a shipping container. I've been presented to a, a group of seven strung out men. I've been on the run where all I knew how to do was run because even when I was in a safe spot. so. Of course, I documented all of these as well, but I knew God was speaking, and I and I, I didn't think it was for me to do anything. So I called other homes wanting to help fundraise or do something for them yeah. because I had this passion now on the inside, but the door just kept being shut, and no one would invite me to come and help do, like clean a toilet. I'm ready to do whatever and nothing, and um, so, it, that just started that passion inside that that would not stop. So he was not going to let you hook your wagon up to someone else's. He had right. spoken through a woman of God. He had marinated you. And then when the dreams shifted, he, he let you experience uh, the things that these children go through so that you could relate and understand what he was calling you to do. Right. Give you empathy and insight. Right. right. I'm so happy that you didn't dig your heels in and say no, but that you just said, okay, here we go. Right? God asked us to do crazy things. Yeah. It took a while, though, before I could <laughs> say yes. Uh, a friend invited me to um, the Human Trafficking Summit in Montgomery, Alabama, um, and I went there and I learned what takes place, not just in our state, but all over our country, of the interstates being major thoroughfares where children are being sold on the circuit from city to city. That the younger they are, the more money that is made off of them. That um, they're branded and tattooed, um, they're muffled, mm -hmm. they're silenced, they're gang raped. They are um, literally tortured. And I left there thinking, God, somebody has to do something. I still was not there. I still was not ready. And a few few months after that, I finally submitted. And I said, <laughs> okay, Lord, because the dreams continued. Yeah. And after I submitted, the dreams um, slowly subsided. 
where I didn't have them anymore, but it just took me saying yes. Yes. Yeah. So many people that are listening, first of all, one response is, I don't want to hear this. I, you know, I, I don't want to know this is happening. Other people are leaning in going, I've got to do something. I've got to pray. I've got to join with her. I've got to join. I, other people are going, okay, well, that's not my calling, but I have another calling that I keep saying no to, and I, I need to surrender and receive. So, so you, you said yes, and this is where your story is so powerful. Once you said yes, what started happening on your property? What started showing up? What started even when nothing was available? Yeah. Shift into you say yes, now here comes the provision. Yeah, yeah. so it, um, it's been seven years. <laughs> <laughs> there are many days that I quit, yeah. uh, went home, and of course, we came back the next day. Um, I know this is ministry, so I don't get paid for what I do. I'm just, God has called me to do it, so I do it for Him. Um, and then in the meantime, uh, we get the calls. We get calls from parents. We get calls from law enforcement, social services. And one day, and this was over a little over a year ago, we got a call. There was a 10-year-old mm -hmm. that needed our doors to be open. Two weeks after that, I got an email that there were 28 children about to be rescued, and they suspected that they all had been trafficked. And I know what's out there in our country, what's available, so, so few beds, because there's no funding for construction. And that day I went home and I just cried. I called a pastor and his wife and I said, I need prayer. Like, I, I'm, I'm ready to throw in the towel. Either God's going to join me on this, <laughs> or I'm just going to do it myself. <laughs> like, I, it's got to be done. Yeah. And, and he did. And it, it took me just being so bold. I'm bold anyway, but at this point, it really, I had a push in the spirit that led the doors to just fly wide open. We had phone calls random phone calls out of the blue. Can we come help? We heard what you're doing. We would like to volunteer services for labor, or for materials. We had people from all over the country come and frame and come and do sheetrock and materials supernaturally appeared. When wood, the stores couldn't get wood to sell it. We got wood donated by the truckloads. When we needed extra nails, they appeared when the store manager said, because of COVID yeah. and supply chain issues. They didn't have it. And I literally wept in a store when the manager said, we checked last night, there's been no new inventory, but we had enough nails to, to finish the project. Same thing with screws for sheetrock. Uh, it, the stories are numerous yeah. and, and too many to tell, yeah. but God literally showed up and showed that this is his and that his heart is breaking for the girls that we will provide services to. And um, all it took is, is finally submitting and saying yes. And, and not just me, this is not mine. Right. This is, is yours. It's the viewers. It, this is um, for us to be his hands and feet. Um, you know, I have a heart for homeless, yeah. hungry, abused from animals. That, have, that are at the shelter. Yeah. I mean, my heart hurts for each of those areas. But when we look at a child or anyone that has been trafficked, they encompass all of that. They've been forced um, to do things that we can't imagine. Yeah. They've been locked up in rooms, not allowed to eat, not allowed to come out, not to live a life in freedom. Human trafficking is modern day slavery. And you're right, so many people do turn their heads because it's so horrific it is. to grasp. Yes, well, they, it, it, it is. And yet we as believers need to lead the charge. You know, Jesus led the charge in so many problems of his day. He set the example for us and you know, he said, you know, suffer not the little children to come unto me, yeah. do them no harm. And if you do, you know, you should just tie a, tie a milestone around your neck and throw yourself into the ocean because he loved the precious ones and he yeah. loved the little ones. And I am so grateful. Tell the viewers, what are some of the unique situations that these children um, face? I was an inner city uh, pastor 
for 12 years. And so I was all in the highways and the byways ministry. And there are unique situations and circumstances that children that haven't been provided for or that have been abused or that have been neglected or have been horrifically taken advantage of. They have needs and they ask questions that is, it's very hard to relate to. So what are some of the things that you deal with on a daily basis from these children? We are not open as of yet, but we, we do get the calls. We do hear from parents. We do hear from the social workers. There are, there are documents that we do read and see. We have been working with a couple of survivors for counseling services and providing that. Um, you know, we human trafficking encompasses not just sex trafficking, labor, and it's organ trafficking as well. And it's torture. At, at the bottom line, it's torture. Sometimes it's not just for the sex. Sometimes it's to cut a Coca-Cola can open and cut you with it or to pull your fingernails off. Um, I feel like I feel like we have a call to action to also pray for the perpetrators. Yeah. As hard as that is, it it's is to think about. But we also need to be praying for the next generation of young boys because yeah. it is mostly male, but it is also female. Yeah. And just to pray that the Lord invade them and protect them at a younger age. Cell phones are probably the biggest issue. We think that... Um, a victim has been taken. And yes, Jen, that does happen. But also, it's happening in our homes yeah. with a cell phone device. Right under parents' noses, grandparents' noses. Right. And if there are no parental controls on the phone, that we think that our children are safe in their bedroom or at home, and, and they're not if the cell phone's not protected um, because the per perpetrators come right into our homes through the phone and we personally know stories where one 12 year old uh, little boy had been on a gaming app chatting with someone that he did not know, had given his home address out and had already, the grooming process, he had already received gifts in his home from someone on the other side. We also got a call. There's a nine-year-old little girl. The Holy Spirit woke the mom up in the middle of the night. She went and checked in the rooms and the child, nine-year-old, hid her device behind her. The mom got it and went through it and saw photos and videos. She had been threatened. They used coer coercion to, um, to, to get pictures and videos that they can sell on another site and this child was a victim right in her own home of exploitation. And that, that is part of the grooming process that does lure them where it does look taken. They lure them out of the home through that brainwashing and through the threats. Yeah. And you know, so often, Chris, Christian parents, uh, moral parents just don't think, well, that just won't happen to me. That won't happen to my child. And that's really where the enemy, you know, he's on the move and he is not going to get uh, weaker. Yeah. Uh, he's going to get stronger, which means we've got to battle up, be prepared, um, have wisdom, pray in tongues. So, so much that we can do. So we just have a short time left. Um, I want you, first of all, when, when, are, when are you opening? How can we be in touch and, and, and to help partner with you? And then why is it called Camille Place? So we are going to be open by the end of the year. Yes. Praying that there are no more yes. delays. No, nope. we're declaring it. We are declaring yes. it. That we will I'm be open agreement. this year. It's the seven year, seven year of completion. Yes, it is. So we are we are claiming and that. Covenant. So we are we're at the point where paintings done, we're putting flooring in, cabinets were donated, and it's we're ready. So we're ready for this final phase. Yay. Um, so Camille Place, the name for Camille Place um, is not the name that I chose. And I had a different name, was working on the logo and was on the final draft. And I was outside and all of a sudden, as crazy as it sounds, I hear audible coming from the left side to me, Camille Place. And instantly in my spirit, I knew that it was to honor uh, a young girl named Camille Coates. And I hollered out, yes, Lord. 
because I knew that was not my thought. I love you. <laughs> I was like, I yes, Lord. You. My kind of girl. <laughs> yes, Lord. I'm, I'm in. <laughs> my daughter said, Mom, who are you talking to? I said, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah. But um, I, went, I went inside, and then I thought about it. And I said, oh, Satan, I rebuke you. That, that cannot be you. This cannot be you. This cannot be. <laughs> Camille um, had been a missionary in Greece, ministering in the red light district to girls her age, um, had helped open a home in Texas when she was in college. And um, she was killed in a car accident mm. a month and a half before I heard Camille place. <sighs> and I had a dream after that. <laughs> And I, w I was at her home in the dream. And I woke up the next day with an urgency to get to her home and talk to her parents. And, um, and when I did, um, her mom wept. And she said, this has been the hardest day I've had yet. And I've asked the Lord for a sign. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Jesus. But, but the Lord knew that her hard day was coming. Yeah. He knew that when he gave me the dream that would give me the urgency to get there and talk to her. So he's honoring um, her heart's desire was to open yes. a home and he's honoring the prayers. Her prayers never died. That's her right. prayers have lingered <laughs> and he's just, um, he's honoring her life through Camille Place. I love that. Mm -hmm. Chris, thank you for saying yes to God. Thank you for leaning in and thank you for stepping out. Thank you for being a God crazy girl and just obeying. And you know, I just want to say to you watching, maybe uh, you've asked the Lord, I wanna be used as a prayer partner for provision, uh, to come up and help, to dedicate, I don't know, CamillePlace.com, right? Yes. CamillePlace.com, go on, pray for Chris and yes. her team. And then to those of you that there's another calling on your life, there's a passion and you just keep, you don't understand the dream or you keep resisting it. I just wanna encourage you today, say yes to God, take the baton. You know, this young lady, Camille, her life in, on earth ended and she laid down a baton and Chris came in and, and picked it up. There are always, reasons that God speaks to us that gives us that the reasons that he gives us dreams so press in be hungry and say yes saying yes to God is one of the scariest things you'll do and is one of the most exhilarating things you'll do we walk by faith and not by sight thank you for your life thank and you. your yes and uh, we'll, we'll have to come back and maybe yes. we can even go up yes. and get footage of your grand uh, opening that would be great but um God is good and, yes. and, and you've touched us today oh, and you've challenged us, no excuses. Come home, come back to Jesus, come back to your calling, come back to the presence of God, embrace the things he's asked you to do. I'm Jen Mallon, we'll see you tomorrow.